Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to already our sixth season of Chemical TV's News Bulletin. With CCTV, we can share news and information from Chemical the Americas 2018 here in New Orleans with you. Also in this series of CCTV's News Bulletin, you can expect interviews with authority and industry experts. Today we have a superb start with an interview on risk evaluation. As of tomorrow, soundbite from the sessions. Every day, a statement of the day and a forecast for the day. And there's always a local reporter with informative stories. Since we are in New Orleans, the home of Jess, the best person I could wish for to make a road trip in the Big Easy, is my friend, musician and composer, Ron Jones. Ron, what a pleasure to have you with us this week. Oh, TJ, it's my pleasure. Welcome to New Orleans. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to our road trip of New Orleans. Ron, you are a famous New Orleans musician, born and raised here. Shall we start our journey with another born and raised musician from New Orleans? Louis Armstrong? Louis Armstrong, pop satchmo of New Orleans. What a fantastic ambassador of New Orleans music. Uh, there's a photo that I brought along of my dad with Louis Armstrong and his band in Chicago many years ago. So you're basically stepping in his footsteps. Yes, we are traveling in the footsteps definitely of those that's gone before us. Isn't that from When the Saints Go Marching In? From the When the Saints Go Marching In, a very popular song here in New Orleans that the Saints football team and all of the fans of the New Orleans Saints sing. Great, let's improvise. If you can play the music, we will show the people in New Orleans watching the 2018 Super Bowl. Oh, absolutely. In 2009, the sun was shining for the New Orleans Saints when they defeated the Indianapolis Colts by a score of 31-17, earning their first Super Bowl win. Also this season, the Saints did very well. However, last night's Super Bowl was won by the Philadelphia Eagles, who defeated the New England Patriots. What a superstar. Thank you, Ron. Let's go to our own Super Bowl. Please watch the highlights of the interview I had with Tala Henry and Claudio Carlon on risk evaluation. Today's topic for our interview is risk evaluation. Two authorities that could be competing for the risk evaluation Super Bowl are the US Environmental Protection Agency and the European Chemicals Agency. Tala, can you in short share the first experiences of the new risk evaluation process under the amended TOSCA? Just in the first year alone, or as far as the risk evaluation process goes, we were um, instructed or required to establish a process by which we conduct these risk evaluations. So another provision was within six months of the law going final, we were to identify and begin risk evaluation on 10 chemicals. So in December of 2016, we did in fact announce what the ten, first 10 chemicals that we would um, be evaluating risk for were. We have to, within six months of initiating a risk evaluation, publish out to the public a scope for the risk evaluation. For uh, Europe, eh, then the risk assessment starts with industry. And after that, uh, uh, ECHA starts reviewing their evaluation, their assessment. Can you tell a little bit how that works? And it is the register in the first place that perform a risk assessment in the form of a chemical safety assessment to ensure that all the uses of the substance throughout the life cycle of the substance take into account the condition of use and the risk management in place are safe. This chemical safety assessment can be assessed by the authorities. Uh, for instance, when uh, we check the compliance with the information requirement of the registration, but more in-depth in substance evaluation, where the member state, with the coordination of ECA, they verify whether there are risk concerns that have been not captured or clarified by the registrant, and they can ask for the information for that purpose. The complete interview can be viewed at our website and YouTube channel, and for those here in the hotel at channel 68, or just press the CCTV button in our Chem Connect app. That brings me to the statement of the day. 
Also in New Orleans, we use our ChemConnect app that allows us to share news and allows you to engage in interactive polls and you can use it for coming together. Regarding the statements, sometimes the statement is an actual statement and sometimes it's a more trivial question, like this example. This is our sixth ChemCon the Americas, but including ChemCon Europe and Asia, it's already number 18, 20 or 25. With us for the first statement of the day, Mr. Mark Herwig of the United Technologies Corporation. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Chair. Mark, as a member of the ChemCon Program Advisory Committee, you probably knew the answer. 25 years. Very good, very good. I know it has been a busy time for American companies with the US Tosca inventory reset. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? The Tosca inventory reset is a program that's in play now and it is uh, almost done for manufacturers and importers and the next big wave is for processors of chemical substances and that in and of itself is a big challenge but it is among a handful of other things that the reformed Tosca under the Lautenberg Chemical Safety Act is imposing on uh, industry in the U.S. Um, and so, you know, there, there's a lot of new th things that companies have to deal with. So for many companies doing the so-called look back period or trying to um, gather data and information within this 10 year window is quite a challenge. Um, you know, and I would say it's across the board, everybody's ability to go back that far. Um, and there are various reasons why the agency wanted industry to go back that far, but it is extremely difficult. And your statement is? For many companies, it was a challenge to look 10 years back. Okay, thank you very much for your statement. Before we finalize with today's forecast, I first will invite Ron to join us at tonight's welcome reception. Ron, are you able to join us tonight? Well, where is it? <laughs> Sorry, we never disclose where we are going, but I can give you a hint. It's around Jackson Square and it's related to the history of New Orleans. By the way, can you tell us a bit about the history of New Orleans? Well, history, as in Sam Cooke, the way he sang it. Don't know much about history. Don't know much about biology. Don't know much about science books. Don't know much about the French I took. What a wonderful world it would be. This year, New Orleans is celebrating its 300th birthday. It was founded in 1718 by Jean-Baptiste Lemoyne de Bienville. In 1803, New Orleans was made United States Territory pursuant to the Louisiana Purchase. In 1815, there was a famous Battle of New Orleans, which was won by the Americans, who were fighting the Brits. The battle's victorious general was Andrew Jackson. The main square and historic park in the heart of the French Quarter of New Orleans are named after him. Nowadays, it is a famous landmark surrounded by historic buildings. What a wonderful world it would be. What a wonderful world it would be. What a wonderful world it would be. But before the welcome reception, we have a very long day of presentations. This morning, we will start with a workshop on REACH. It's almost May, followed by an overview of the amendments of Tosca the current implementation status and the impact of Tosca rules for industry. In the afternoon, a seminar on nuts and bolts with in-depth details of chemical control legislation aspects like the Brazilian rows and Japanese MIDI numbers. Furthermore, useful tools and business examples on how to become organized. Thank you for watching and looking forward to seeing you at tonight's welcome reception. <laughs>